this is uh, focusing on the left side of heart failure, okay? Now remember that here we have the aortic arch. The aortic arch is gonna just branch off into a lot of things. Part of it is the head or the brain, and then you're gonna be branching off into everything else, spleen, kidneys, aorta, mesentery, uh, lungs, heart, everything, okay? So again, let's just draw a little picture here. The heart. stuff but we don't need to get into all that because this is not that kind of class so here's the order and we just talked about this not too long ago and part of the things that they will feed off into would be the renal arteries right so again the difference between right and left so left we're going to focus on pulmonary congestion or pulmonary edema, dyspnea, tachypnea, crackles in lungs, cough, and increase in uh, blood pressure. The biggie here is organ failure. Now, how do you get pulmonary congestion? Now remember that behind here, by the lungs, okay? Now let's just forget about the aorta for now, but here by the lungs. Now it's gonna, blood's gonna come in from the right atrium, right ventricle. Uh, it's gonna go into the lungs. Now, you have the left ventricle, remember this is the part that's pumping. This is gonna push into the, blood's gonna come up, it's gonna go into the aortic arch, blood's gonna go into the carotid arteries, so on and so forth, come down into the aorta, feed the kidneys and every, every other organ. Well, if the left ventricle is not pumping like it should, this blood, this fluid is accumulating in the lungs. If it accumulates, it cannot leave, You'll have pulmonary congestion. You'll have fluid accumulating in the lungs. Okay, so this is where you come into pulmonary congestion, pulmonary edema. Now, because of this situation, again, you cannot have the patient lying supine. You want them in a semi upright or upright position. If they're lying in a supine position, that fluid's going to disperse. It's going to make it difficult for them to breathe. So another thing that you want to do is you want to monitor their O2 saturation. Hook them up to a oximeter. Is their oxygen okay? If not, supplement with the appropriate O2. Another thing that you want to worry about is anybody that has pulmonary congestion, if they're in pain, you want to watch how you medicate them with pain medicine. Because remember, pain medication tends to suppress the respiratory system. So if they're already having breathing problems and you give them some pain medication, morphine, Dilaudid, anything like that, you'll suppress their breathing, making it more likely for them to be short of breath or low O2. Okay, so you wanna watch their O2 sets always. So again, we just talked about why you have pulmonary congestion, pulmonary edema. You can have tachypnea because you can't breathe. It's gonna be hard for you to catch your breath. So another thing that you can do, something called ABG, which stands for arterial blood gas. You want to do that so you can monitor their O2, their CO2 values. Okay? You also want to check for acidosis, that kind of thing. Uh, so that, we already just talked about pulmonary congestion, pulmonary edema, tachypnea, crackles in the lungs when you auscultate. Auscultate here, auscultate here, auscultate here. You'll hear the fine crackles. Why? Because you have pulmonary edema, you have some fluid, you have blood in here. That's why you have the crackles in the lungs. <clears throat> it's making it hard for you to breathe. <clears throat> so you'll tend to cough, try to clear the throat. Again, you have this cough due to the pulmonary congestion again. Again, here we go with increase in blood pressure. The reason you have increase in blood pressure is because you're not getting rid of this fluid like you should. It's all being maintained inside your body. Now, if this side's gonna fail, then most likely eventually what end up happening is this side will also fail, and just like we talked about right-sided heart failure, you're gonna have edema, peripheral, hepatomegalocytes, all that, because the left side is not working like it should. Now, the big that you wanna focus on here is organ failure. The reason you have organ failure is because, again, the left ventricle should pump blood to all of the, where's the eraser at?
remember that the left ventricle is going to pump blood into the aortic arch. Make things simple. It's going to go into the carotids. Now, if blood cannot come in here, or it cannot come into your carotids, what's going to happen? You might have some AMS, altered mental status. Okay? If uh, so, confusion, dizziness, maybe some nausea. If blood cannot come through here to your kidneys, then you have something called ischemia. Or if it's really, really bad, uh, necrosis, death of tissue. Okay? So, this is very, very important. Remember, when we talked about uh, pre renal failure, one of the things is that may cause it is hypovolemia, in this case caused by a uh, decrease in blood pressure, which is caused by a decrease in pumping activity. So yes, we talked about uh, increase in BP. The other thing that you want to focus on is hypovolemia or decreased cardiac output because the left ventricle is not pumping like it should. So therefore you will end up with organ failure. And this is not, it's not necessarily only to the kidneys, but again, to the brain, to uh, spleen, pancreas, everything, because of course the heart feeds blood to the entire organ system.